Hi everybody, I'm Robin Callen with Room Food in Austin, Texas, and today I'm chatting with Design Star Season 4 finalist, Jason Champion. Hello, Jason. Hi, Robin. How are you today? I'm good, but what I need to hear is, hey girl, hey. Hey girl, hey! <laughs> <laughs> That's how I start off all of my conversations, Robin, even in the biggest board meetings I've ever it's always, hey girl, hey! <laughs> it's not a conversation with you unless I hear that. You um, are so right. <laughs> so last week I tried to speak to Matt Locke, and I did speak to Matt Locke, but the, we had some technical issues and the video went awry. So I'd like to ask you one of the questions I asked him about the first episode of Design Star All-Stars, and that okay. is the subject of the prize package in this measly $25,000 award plus a walk-on part on an HGTV show. The, what do you, how do you feel about that? I didn't say it. I'm quoting Robin of uh, measly $25,000 <laughs> um, for what time and effort goes into doing one of these reality shows, having participated in Design Star, it's a lot of effort and a lot of time out of what you normally do. So $25,000, you know, they probably set it over four weeks when they filmed. And, you know, that's not a bad salary in four weeks. When you take taxes out, you probably get about $2,000. Um, you know, the walk-on roll, you know, that's iffy because it doesn't, it's not specific in hey, you're going to be in front of the camera, it could be you're in the background sweeping the ground. I don't really know. So, you know, it could be something amazing, but short window of time, I'm expecting. Right. Plus, I just think if it's all, if they're truly all stars, we're going to put these people up as all stars, then their, their HGTV appearance should be a little beefier than the average winner. I agree. And you know what, though? Design Star All-Stars is probably the best program, hands down, that HGTV has come out with in a long time, simply because we've had seven seasons of Design Star now. That is 12 people per season. You have this pool of talent that automatically HGTV likes, therefore that's why they put you on camera, and you were good at what you do. So it's time that they take that talent and develop it into future shows. But they missed a great deal of talent. I mean, only putting six people on there? I'm going to be on season two, so just get ready. <laughs> Not a problem, but I will take my $25,000 and the crown and walk away. <laughs> awesome. You know what Jeb said? What? <laughs> Why don't they just give him a $500 gift card to Applebee's? Uh, I would prefer chilies, but okay. Yes, that would probably be just about what you get within the amount of time you spend. Yeah, I, I'm not saying I would turn down 25 grand, but... No, 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 I'm not. <laughs> so, uh, about last night's episode, what did you think of, of the show? What did you think of the work that everybody did? Overall, when they do competition shows, I, I hate them simply because there's too many people trying to get across too many points of views in too small of space. That's always what happens. And perfect example was Sparkle Josh's team. They tried too many things in too many small spaces with the stripes, the box, the movable coffee table. There was just too much going on. Um, Dan and Tom, I think, really hit it well, but there were moments that were like, what are you thinking? So, again, it's that point of view trying to get across in a short period of time so you can impress those three judges that are sitting up there. Yeah. And design is objective. <laughs> yes, but uh, those of us with strong opinions uh, can figure out you know, can sort the wheat from the chaff, so to speak, don't you think? Uh, you know, there's some truth in that. 
you know, but because Genevieve and Byrne sold their soul to the devil to be where they are, doesn't mean that they are the power rule. There are many designers out there that have not gone the route of HGTV and been super successful. Not that Byrne and Genevieve don't do amazing design, it's just two different avenues of how people get there. So, did you agree with the judges last night when they sent home? As much as I don't want to, I do. Um, I think Sparkle Josh, as big as his personality is and as far-reaching as what his talent is, I think it kind of got diminished last night and the sparkle just kind of got rubbed off. And the two women, unfortunately, just ran over him in a lot of ways and it just didn't, it didn't translate the way it should have in the all-star show. Sparkle, get it together. Two women ran over him? Two women. Or one. I only saw one run over him. I'm being equal voiced, Robin. <laughs> and that two women. Problem is, is they were all going for the crown, and Sparkle Josh said it himself. Amazing evening gown, amazing swimsuit, and he just fell short on his interview question. Right. Um, so who do you think, who's your pick to win it? Who should I pick to win? It's kind of a toss-up right now. I really think Tom did an amazing job last night because I watched his season, and I felt like he was kind of, in a way, timid and didn't come across on camera the way it should have because sometimes it kind of looked as if he was sulking or frowning. But last night, he really hit it out of the park. Um, I think Dan is probably set up really well to win this show because he is super creative and I have to tell you Dan this is a personal note you have improved so much since Design Star I'm very proud of you but I'm still pissed off <laughs> <laughs> about he'll know why <laughs> <laughs> you know on the subject of Dan I am really wowed by the concepts that he's come up with this season with the high boy bookcase and this media center and the way he repurposed that, those pieces of furniture this episode. But I am reminded why I wasn't such a huge fan during season four, and that's because he kind of comes across as a sourpuss. Why is he so serious? Dan is, like I said, he's improved a lot since Design Star, but he's really got to find that true comfort zone on camera with what he does and able to, to back it up. He can speak well, he looks great on camera, but there's still just that one little edge of personality that's not coming through that when you're with him on a daily basis, like we were you you can see that he's funny, he's charismatic. I mean, there's a lot of things that are great qualities about him that's sometimes not necessarily translated on the camera. But that's a lot of editing also. Yeah, true. Um, so as far as your career since Design Star goes, <laughs> <laughs> How has that evolved? Wow. Um, the evolution of Jason Champion Design since Design Star has been really a crazy ride. Um, it opened the doors for so many things that I had been wanting to do. Um, a lot of public speaking, more radio show, a lot of um, morning TV shows doing, you know, how to decorate a Christmas tree. But... You know, the one thing that I am very grateful for is that it's opened the door to let me work with nonprofits where I feel as much as I get in life, I should give back. So I've worked tons with Habitat for Humanity and actually did a big PR thing here in Sarasota. Yay, Sarasota. Um, I built and designed and furnished the 100th house that Sarasota County did for Habitat for Humanity and the life that I was able to change with putting these people in their home when they were down on their luck has been one of the most rewarding things that I've ever done. Um, 
And then to brag a moment, I was on HGTV Show House Showdown, where I did compete against one of the top 100 design firms in the country. And I won! <laughs> when I have time to put together the right design, I can really produce some amazing stuff. So when you guys get a chance, go to jasonchampiondesign.com, and you'll be able to see all the photos. Absolutely, that was amazing. Shameless plug. <laughs> what? Shameless plug right there. <laughs> yeah, I was a huge fan of that show house. I thought you did a great job. And it was I, fun. Thank you. I covet the library, personally. You know what, Robin? That library was, it turned out better than I expected it to. And when I was buying the books at every habitat in the state of Florida, um, and large retailers that were getting rid of stuff. I bought close to 5,000 books, and every time I would buy some, people would be like, you've got too many, you've got too many, and I'm like, I don't have too many. And I literally put the last book on that shelf and had none left. Um, so that was that was a really fun to see that come alive, really fun. Awesome. Well, I so appreciate you chatting with me today, and I look forward to seeing more of your stuff. We'll put a link to your website on my blog. Yes, please. Uh, wish you lots of luck. Um, start the campaign. <laughs> I will be on season two, HGTV's Design Star All-Stars. See you, Burn. <laughs> you heard it here first. You heard um, it here first. <laughs> next week we're going to speak to... That sounded so southern. We're going to speak to... <laughs> Hey, just because we talk slow doesn't mean we're stupid. <laughs> we're talking to Kevin Grace next week after uh, the third episode of Design Star All-Stars. You may remember Kevin Grace from season six of Design Star. So we're going to chat with him next week. So come on back and check that interview out next week. See ya. Uh, thanks a bunch. See you soon. Okay, bye.